after the wake of Don't Ask, Don't Tell being repealed, which by the way can still be taken back if there's too much uh, resistance to it within the military, although I don't think there will be because of the simple fact that our armed forces put honor above anything else. There also was passed within the last day or two was um, the United Nations put gays and lesbians back onto the class of people that you can't just arbitrarily start wiping off the map. Do they have a good track record of taking care of that? No. They have an atrocious record of that. But, like in chess, it's not the execution that's important. It's the threat of it. With these two most recent victories for gays, lesbians, and transgenders, like myself, which, oh, I might add, we're not actually on the United Nations protected groups, which, by the way, makes me a little on the cranky side, but you know what? It's a start, and I'll see you guys back here in two years when we're having to fight this argument again. Now, moving on to the third thing, this is something that I've become aware of over the last two days, two or three days. In South Africa, which was the first country to allow gay marriage and has passed some other resolutions that helps the LGBT community, another thing, oh, and they most recently did the World Cup, another thing they're known for is they are the rape capital of the world. One in ten males in that country will be raped in their lifetime. And these aren't Catholic schoolboys getting raped by Catholic priests. No, no, no. These are men that get raped by other men just as a sign of power. Rape upon women is far more prevalent than that. Far above 50% or 60% if I remember right. Way above that. But also they have a thing over there known as corrective rape. And that's the thing that's really been bothering me. The idea behind corrective rape is that women who are raped by straight men, they'll obviously want to become straight themselves after having such a wonderful fun time with the men that did this to them. In this picture is a young woman, her nickname is Millie from what I've seen in a few different news articles. Recently, she was strangled, tied up, beaten, and raped. The man that did it was released on $6 bail. You could go buy ribs at Applebee's and have change left over in comparison to what he had to pay to get out of jail after raping somebody. His broken bond, his, uh, his bail, yet he still walks free, threatening Millie and threatening the women that Millie lives with. She lives in a two-person shack with 15 people. This is atrocious. Public policies are important. Unlike what Rand Paul and many Tea Party members think, Public policy does help shape a society. If we didn't have the civil rights movement back in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, it actually started well before that. But if you didn't have that civil rights movement, the face of America would be a lot less tolerant, not only of gay people, but of every creed and national origin. And that changed because of public policy. There are still atrocities done, but there are a lot less. What follows is a news report video that I found here on YouTube, as well as some other shocking videos. I hope that you stay around and watch them, but more, more importantly, down in the link bar down below, I'll have links to change.org, which is what brought this atrocious event to my attention, as well as a few other links to some other sites.
a few sites that you just may find useful if you feel so inclined as you would like to help those that truly need you this holiday season. This is a war that's not going to be won with either guns or money. It'll be won by moving people's hearts and changing policy. I thank you for watching and any support that you can give these wonderful people, these people in need. Thank you. The self-styled Rainbow Nation that will be hosting football's World Cup in just over a year. But since the end of apartheid, South Africa has a more sinister claim to fame. It is the rape capital of the world. A quarter of all women are raped by the time they are 16. And now there's a horrendous new phenomenon known as corrective rape, targeting women because they're lesbians. One of the most high-profile victims is Yudi Simolani. She was trained to be the first female referee at the 2010 World Cup when she was gang-raped and murdered. From Johannesburg, Samira Ahmed has this special report. Be warned, the subject matter is highly distressing. This is the face South Africa wants to present when the World Cup comes next year. The rainbow nation democracy, whose young constitution enshrined equality, not just for all races, but for gay and straight people alike. But sexual violence has increased rapidly since the end of apartheid. There are 500,000 rapes every year now. Past the nearly completed football stadium, away from the hip gay bars and restaurants, lesbian women are increasingly being targeted for so-called corrective rape and even murder. And victims say the police and the courts are turning a blind eye to the hatred. Yudi Similani's has been the only case to get widely reported in South Africa. The 31-year-old had travelled the world with the national women's team, Banyana Banyana, and was training to be the first female referee in next year's World Cup when she was brutally murdered in Kwatema Township, about 30 miles from Johannesburg. On the night of April the 28th last year, Yudi Similani was walking home after a night out with friends at a bar just over there behind those houses when she was attacked by a group of men. They dragged her across the open ground to here. Then they stabbed her repeatedly. They gang raped her. And they dumped her in this ditch. They took her to the government mortuary. They say, Mommy, you cannot see her. She's terrible. You cannot, you'll be mad if you see that. They've uh, stabbed her 25 holes. Tell me how you feel about the men who killed your daughter. Bad. Very bad. I feel I can kill him also. Mm. He mustn't come out. He must die there. He's a dog. Justice has moved swiftly for Yudi's mother. Five men were arrested immediately. Four are currently awaiting trial. A fifth was jailed last month for 31 years after admitting attacking Yudi because she was lesbian. But Mali Similani is angry that the judge dismissed the motive as irrelevant. Why do they kill them? Hmm? Innocent people. They don't do wrong. It's a hate crime. It's a hate crime. Mali Similani has become a regular demonstrator at South Africa's increasingly coordinated protests over violence against women. This demo was over the lengthy delays to a rape case after the courts repeatedly lost crucial documents and lawyers failed to turn up for hearings. Such problems are legion. And we came here and what happened? There was no judge. They're sitting in the entrance hall, flustered a few court officials and crucially got these women some rare national news coverage. One of South Africa's most experienced prosecutors of rape cases acknowledges the legal system is struggling to cope but insists that once a rapist is convicted, gay hatred is irrelevant in sentencing. The reason why she was specifically targeted, because she was, her dress was too short, I mean, that we often hear, her uh, cleavage was too obvious, that we often hear, or she dressed like a man, that we hear. So, I mean, yeah, the rapist seems to find always a reason why they target that specific woman. And therein lies the dilemma of South Africa's epidemic of rape. While women's prosperity and freedom have improved immeasurably since the end of apartheid, entrenched macho attitudes have fueled a backlash on a horrifying scale. Certainly in Kwatema Township, where Yudi Similani lived and died, 
While no one told me they approved of murder, I found many men with strong views on homosexuality and cynical about my interest in corrective rape. I've never in my whole life, I know a million guys, not, I don't know one guy who said, yeah, I'm going to hit a lesbian woman or a gay guy. I think it's, it's a very narrow way of thinking about Africa. If you are a man, you are a man. You just need to be a man. If you are a woman, you are a woman. That's it. What do you think of um, the men who say that you have to rape a lesbian to fix her? I think uh, they, they are good. I think that is good because that, that is not good to be a lesbian. I think that is a good idea to do that thing. It's a good idea to rape them? Not, not to rape them, but they are showing them wha what they are. Nonklantla lives in Kwatema too. She is tormented by the fact that her 13-year-old twin daughters were gang raped because of her sexuality. One later killed herself. Around by 8 o'clock, they came with my cousin. They couldn't walk. They couldn't do anything. When I see them, I just told my mother, they were raped. They say, we wanted to show you, you don't have to be like your mother. You're supposed to be the woman that is need to be by the man. Only 31 corrective rapes have been officially recorded in the past decade, but with just one in nine rapes believed to be reported to police at all and a conviction rate below 5%, campaigners say few lesbian women have faith in reporting to officers who often show little sympathy. The South African police insist this is changing. One must understand the police mirror the population. So therefore it is a difficult task and it's not something that you can take a member give him training of one week and then expect that that member will be the most gender sensitive person on earth. This new phenomenon of corrective rape is something that we have not yet established as a trend in South Africa. We still regard it as exceptions, but we are taking note of it and we are planning accordingly. The government is introducing a new legal code for dealing with sexual offences but is at a loss when it comes to turning around South Africa's crisis of sexual violence. You feel a sense of shame that this is happening in your country. We battle to deal with difference, even though we, we celebrate internationally this notion of a rainbow nation. And that's the contradiction. But perhaps, to some extent, we ignore 350 years of history of, of neglect and of prejudice. Uh, and so in some respects, uh, we console ourselves in saying that we're a young democracy, and these are the kind of healing problems in a democracy. But I don't think you can offer that to a victim of, of rape or to a victim of corrective rape. Yudi Similani was a woman of the new South Africa. We grew up in this, in this yard playing soccer here. Her brother taught her to play football. Her father's family spent years in jail as anti-apartheid activists. Their grief is deepened by the failure of the republic they fought for, to protect the right of lesbian women like her to live their lives in dignity and freedom. You can find out more on our website about the Action Aid campaign against hate crime in South Africa. Tonight. If there is someone who is trying to rape those lesbians, me, I can appreciate the thing that is there. Because we just to let them know they must be in a straight motion of way. I mean, I have no time to rape them, but if there is some of the other guys who wanted to teach them the way, they must rape them, they must rock them. Once she gets raped with the guy, I think she want to know a way and to do something which is nice. No, my idea is to say, let's turn their minds to be normal, because right now they are being inhuman. Some and somehow I blame myself, but at the end of the day, I've said no one is going to change me and no one has the right to hurt my children. No one has the right to hurt me, but they make me to be strong. It's not for the first time, but it has to stop. <laughs>